in Colorado Springs for visiting the Olympic Training Center for my follow-up treatment. We're gonna do some more consult, but I'm here mainly for my PRP and uh, stem cell treatment. Hi. Use my chaperone. Are you gonna look at the needle? Are you gonna hold my hand? Alright, check you out with the track knowledge. Then they go one, two, three. <laughs> Don't give me the lie. Is that Gatlin? They went one, two. And he got silver. I mean, uh, bronze. So who is this? It might be Tyson. No, because Tyson That's too big. This is like college living. You got to be able to bring your own uh, TV. <laughs> Bougie. Says the man who brings his own TV to camp. Oh, wait till you see this bathroom. <laughs> One thing I was going to ask you that I think we're a little confused on. Do you know who Karen is? I don't. I've only been communicating with her through email. So. Okay. So you, but you know of her, she's yes. been talking to you? Yes. So I know she had called a couple times and she was a little confused on the stem cell and PRP. Mm -hmm. Do you want him to go over both options with you? Or yeah. was it just stem cell? The treatment that was recommended was actually both together. Uh -huh. So I, yeah, I wanted to talk about both. both. I've had one PRP before. On the knee? Yes. Okay, how long ago was that? May. May of this year? This year, yeah. So you've actually had the PRP done May of this year and treated the right knee. Mm -hmm. did, did, did that help at all? There or not? was a little bit of improvement, but I'm still in pain. Okay. So, so they treated you, did the PRP um, for the right knee, got a little bit better, but not, not a whole lot. And is he the doctor who had recommended doing stem cell and PRP? No, I went for a second opinion of it, St. Vincent's. After and, seeing him? Yes. Okay. This was just a couple weeks ago. So I went for a second opinion there, mm -hmm. and what they tell you? They're the ones who recommended both. Yeah, they, I mean, he pretty much found the same things. We did another MRI, so he pretty much found the same thing from the first one. Um, he suggested because I did see some improvement from the PRP, maybe I just needed to have a couple more rounds, but he wanted to do the PRP and stem cell. Stem cell, there are three ways to get stem cell. Bone marrow, uh, amniotic, and fat. The bone marrow is the one we discussed. Okay, so uh, that would not typically be taken from the back of your hip, or from the hip, we go in from the back. Uh, you can technically go into any one bone. Uh, the other way that people do it sometimes is in the heel. I've never seen anybody actually do it that on something that's non, not under sedation or anesthesia. Okay. I guess people do it, but most people are just do it from the back, from the iliac crest. That has the most viable stem cells. We look at uh, some cell markers to figure out like what stem cells are active. There's nothing magical about stem cells. Like they're just cells that haven't decided what they want to do. The last 10 years, uh, we've gotten better and better. I think the last three to five has made even a bigger advance than the previous five. Veterinary literature is way ahead of us on this. Part of it is uh, you can objectively say to somebody like if, if we uh, they initially were doing it in uh, 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 racing horses to say, hey, this horse we can inject this, and then they put weight on their hoof, which they hadn't before, so they got better. The difference is though that you control everything about the horse, right? You can say, okay, we're going to take the horse out of the stall. We're going to he's going to eat this, going to drink that. It's a lot easier to objectively identify how they did, depending on what they were treating, whether it was tendons or joints. When you start involving the meniscus and the cartilage, then uh, changes things a little bit as far as what cells are. But the amniotic products are those the ones that you just can purchase through usually cord blood or through orange jelly. Those are from somebody else. Those just come pre-filled syringes and they have some stem cell in them. The question has been how much? Because you know we know that like in bone marrow we have pretty high percent. And, yeah, in fact, it's it's okay. Um, in Europe, they use different enzymes to help kind of clean. But uh, amnio products will tell you like, hey, this has got say 40% stem cell. The problem is that may have been their percent right, right when, when the delivery happened, yeah. but that was before it was frozen and shipped and 
And so then we thought, ah, oh, we may find zero, right. maybe 15%, whereas in bone marrow, we're probably gonna get closer to 97%. There are growth factors in amino products. So like there is some benefit, but growth factors that you can get from those are the same as you get from your platelets. So I personally, and I don't have uh, a massive volume of literature to show you because frankly, those products are hard to get a real straight answer as far as what their actual numbers, they'll give them, but they're, right. they're, you gotta really sift through it. The growth factors are essentially the same in your PRP than as it is those. I don't know that there's a lot of benefit in the Amneo products over PRP in most people's cases. Maybe, again, if you get one of those lucky batches and you're 15%, okay there's some stem cell in there. Whereas in platelets, it's just recruiting the stem cells that are circulating. Obviously you got to get those, you got to numb the bone up, you got to go into the bone, you got to pull out. If you're only doing one knee, uh, you know, it's between 60 and 100 milliliters. If, so it takes a few vials to get enough of a cell count to run the protocol. Otherwise you're just really doing platelets and you haven't. Right. I think the thing I would tell one of patients or athletes to know is like, well, what are you trying to accomplish? The thing that I'm trying to avoid is surgery. And the thing that has come back is you can either do this treatment or do a microfracture. I think Dr. Rodriguez told me like four months of inactivity and I'm just trying to make it through one more Olympic cycle. I tried the, you know, training through and so now I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to call this not trying for the rest of the year. Let's figure out how to get this healthy and pain-free so that I can actually train the way that I want to train. So I'm trying to find the least aggressive but most effective way, if that makes sense. Well, how much time would you be willing to take off if you did it? About two or three months. Oh, you would? Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of people come in and they want to take a week off. And it's like, well, let's think about how this works, right? So we're putting in cells in different parts of the knee. Probably the best analogy is like, that's like trying to throw seeds on the ground, expecting them to be able to go pick the... I think the term Dr. Carey used is like, you know, we can do the treatment, but you have to give it an environment to heal. And I was like, okay. Yeah, the PRP kind of what it does is it turns off some inflammation in the knee. It's sort of like prepping the soil with some fertilizer. The stem cells putting the seeds in there. You gotta cultivate them, we gotta give them a chance. First day you put them in there, it rains and pours and washes all the seeds out or turns up an inflammatory environment in there they can't survive. Right. Because they're fragile little dudes. So can I do like core? Yeah, I, we just don't want to load the knee. We can do things like straight leg raises. We just don't want to put a lot of joint force through there. And especially when we get into more than about uh, 45 degrees of flexion, um, certainly bringing it all the way back. The other thing I would tell you is I don't just put them in and jack done. Like we got to hit all those points on the MRI. So we do that by ultrasound, but we, you know, we're looking at each one of those sites and make sure that we're putting where we say we are. And then we have kind of a specific volume that we want to hit. Again, it kind of depends on your MRI for me to tell you that specifically. What you're telling me is sounds like you've got some chondromalacia. That's a good thing for you as far as prognosis goes. Meniscus. So we do use fat if we're trying to inject the meniscus itself. So that's another source. We okay. take that from the side. You're not going to be easy to get that from. You don't think so? No. Anyway, uh, you don't need very much is the good news. <laughs> like you don't you need like a mill. Okay. Uh, not, you don't need much. So when you say I'm not going to be very easy, does that mean it's that harder to get it. it? So is it going to be more uncomfortable for me? No, no, no. I mean, there's an extra couple of numb shots. I think it's worth doing though. We have to be careful of to make sure we stay with, within the bounds. Right. So somebody who's an accomplished athlete like yourself has talked to lots of people, I get it. Um, if you talk to people who go to Europe, they do use fat, and then those enzymes I mentioned, they can inject those kind of, depending what country, they can inject them wherever they want. We cannot inject fat into a joint. So the FDA says we can inject around joints, we can inject okay. fiber cartilage, like we, but we can't. Um, what they say is that that's not autologous or homologous to your joints, okay. and that's cell manipulation, uh, or I know there's multiple terms for that. So we, you know, we stay on the up and up on that, but they have clearly stated like we can use that for fat pads, which are important parts of your joint health. We can use it for meniscus. We can use it for tendons. We can use it as long as we're not putting it into the facet joint or into, and it's silly because the question is, well, it's in the meniscus, which is in the joint, It's a, but I'm injecting interest substance to the structure. Okay. So we're staying within bounds of making sure that, you know, we're not pushing anything. We're not supposed to be there. If you're putting cells that aren't supposed to be there, aren't naturally there, you're modifying using biologic cells in somewhere that it's not native to. Yeah. 
and that's that maybe a potential ethical concern. Right. I mean, you right. can see where that line yeah. can get blurred. When you get into actual anatomy, it's like, well, there are fat padsy joints. You can't actually inject cells into a joint and keep it right there because the whole joint communicates. I think that's something that's worth exploring, doing if you're going to go to do it um, if you have a minister. If you don't have a meniscal or tendon tear, I would not use that. Okay. So that would be something we want to definitely confirm that, okay. you know, it's worth doing. Our goal is, to your point, is the idea is if we can get those cells to start to regenerate. Now, these commercials or these pictures you see where, like, the x-ray looks like this and then after stem cell, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, when is it over? There's no more anatomy.